So let's take another stab at understanding callbacks. And in this attempt, we're going to actually look at some code. And, and this is, apologies to the Kotlin people, this is Java code. It sort of doesn't matter. I, what I want you to understand here is why we use a callback when we're performing a network operation. So before we talked about callbacks, we talked about them for things like, you know, what happens when the user enters data into the search bar. Because there, we fundamentally don't know when something is going to happen. And so we need Android to not notify us. Right? We can't really wait for it because we're not exactly sure if it's even going to happen. So with a network callback, we make a request to the server and we don't know when the reply is going to arrive. It's possible that our network is slow or the server might be slow and take a little bit of time, but we fundamentally make the request, we send the request over the network and we're not exactly sure when it's going to return. And so what we you know, you might wonder, why not just wait for it? Like, I know it's going to return at some point, right? Why not just wait for, you know, when the app starts up, why not just wait for the list of restaurants to be available rather than calling this callback method? Why am I using this callback pattern when I do network operations? So I want to show you, and this is tough to do actually, because Android is really good about preventing you from doing network activity in what's called the main thread of your application. So some of the concepts here get a little bit advanced and past the things that we talk about in this class. But here's a mental model that may be helpful. Your app has like one person who's in charge of doing everything. That person needs to draw the screen. So they need to like render the list of restaurants. They need to respond to events like the user clicking on something. They need to update the list when the user searches for something. So that one person is running around doing all these things, okay? And one of the things they need to do is retrieve that list of, of uh, restaurants that is used to populate the display. So they have two options. They can retrieve the list of restaurants by waiting for it to come back, or they can use a callback, which is they call the server and they say, hey, I want a list of restaurants and the server says, okay, I'll notify you when, when you're done, when it's done. And they get this callback method and they say, here's what I want to happen when that list of restaurants is available. That's the pattern we're using right now. So what would happen to the app if that one person who's in charge of doing everything, rendering the dis display, responding to user events, doing all the stuff, what would happen if they got stuck doing that one thing? Let's say they decided to wait for the, the response to come back. So here's one way that we can try to simulate this. So in on create, I'm gonna put a, like a while loop <laughs> uh, or maybe like a really big for loop or something. Maybe I'll do four uh, int i is zero, i is less than 104 times 104, i plus plus. And inside that, let's put another loop because uh, we actually really, computers are so fast these days, we actually really need a lot of stuff to happen here. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put a couple of loops in here. Uh, I think something's gonna be upset because there's nothing happening in here. Uh, oh, okay, how about this? Just to, just to fake it out, I'll create an int k and I'll do k plus plus, okay? So essentially, I've got a, a loop that I'm running, and this is going to slow down on create. Um, and so what we'll see here is what happens when I when I start when I start the app. Um, and actually, you know what? I don't want to put this in on create. Sorry. Let's put it down here in on query text submit. So this is what's called when the um, when we uh, when the user returns that. Uh, what is where this came from? Okay. Um, all right. So let's try running this again. Uh, now, what I, here's what I expect to happen. I expect that the app will start up fine, um, and it's going to run. Uh, oh, oh, I need to return true here. Sorry, I need to keep that return statement in here. Uh, all right, cool. All right, so I expect the app to start up fine, um, and it'll be responsive. But then, when I put some text in the query box and hit return, that that one person who's in charge of doing everything is going to get stuck in this stupid loop that I added, right? And then let's see what happens at that point. All right, so I'm putting some text and it's being filtered. Let's put in like pizza, something that we know will show up. And I'll hit return, okay? And now look at the UI. It's totally frozen. I can't click. I can't do anything. I can't scroll. Like the whole app is stuck because, and now it says it's not responding. It, it got stuck because that one person who's in charge of doing everything, responding to events, you know, whatever, got stuck doing this one really slow thing, which is in this dumb loop, right? And I can wait this out. Eventually, this should actually finish. I, maybe, maybe, maybe my loops are too aggressive. 
I, I thought that this would be this would be quick, but you can see like that the app is hung, and you may have used an Android app that has this problem where um, and if we looked at the logs, there's going to be these angry messages about we're too we're doing too much work on the main thread because we got stuck like running in this big loop, and because of that, nothing else has happened. The app is like basically totally frozen, and eventually Android will give us another chance to to kill it, right? Um, this is what would happen if we waited for the list of restaurants from the server. This is what would happen. The app would start up and it would make that request and it would sit here. And in the meantime, like nothing else about the app would work, right? And this is the same thing that would happen to the app if it did any type of network operation um, without using a callback, right? And this is sort of like what the app is doing right now is it's almost the equivalent of like when you call up to get help for something and they're like on hold and it's like you are, 50 second in line, the estimated wait time is four hours and you're sitting there like, oh gosh. Now, you can do other things, right? I mean, you're capable of like putting the phone down and putting it on speaker and going about your business, but your Android app's not. It's like literally stuck right now in this stupid loop that I put in on Query Text Submit, which I have to admit like is remarkably effective, right? I did not realize how long this thing would be hung for, but I guess it may, it does make my point, right? Um, let, me, let, me, let me shut it down. I'm just so I'm just amused by this. All right, Let, let's try doing a smaller loop so I can show you kind of what a little hang looks like, um, because that was a little that was a little, a little too intense even for me. So now what we should expect to see is that the app's gonna stall, and this might be again something that you've seen when you use a real app or a real website. This might happen to you with Android Studio if your machine's a little bit slow, right? It gets laggy, right? So I put in pizza and I hit return and now it's, okay, well not, now it's not, apparently not long enough, <laughs> right? Uh, since you see that it's, oh uh, wait, I have to hit return. Okay, so hit return and then, uh, okay. So, so now it's not long enough. Let's try putting in a little bit of a longer loop. Uh, what happened here? Uh, let's do like maybe just this. I think that'll work, right? Uh, so that add, that basically adds another 1024. Let's try this. It's tricky to get it right, right? Um, so yeah, the million's not large enough. Uh, hopefully, uh, a billion will give us enough enough of a loop to really see the st like it getting stally, right? So try this. Let's do uh, this, and then okay, yeah. See now it's it's hung, right? So nothing is is working. But then suddenly all these events come through at once. Uh, so now again I can I can update the UI. But see this like it's 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 hanging, right? So ooh, that was a bad thing to search for. Uh, let's look for pop maybe. Uh, so I hit return, and now it's it's hung briefly, and it just gets laggy and 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 jerky, um, and we don't want that. So this is why whenever we do any type of slow request in our Android app, we use a callback pattern. Rather than calling up and waiting on hold while other things are trying to happen, like the user is trying to scroll and they're like, wait, I want to scroll. And you're like, nope, sorry, I'm waiting to get the list of restaurants. You can't do that. Instead, use the callback pattern, which is what you know most good help sites do now, right? They don't say wait in line. They say, we'll contact you. Uh, when uh, when help is available, right? So you call up and it says, okay, we'll call you back within the next four hours. You put down the phone, then you can go about other business, right? So this is a little bit of an illustration of the types of problems that you can run into when you don't use the callback pattern and when you wait for things that take too long and can't get to other activities that need to be performed, like updating the UI and things like that.